Hi, this is Ali Arango of ArangoDigitalProduction.com and today I'm going to be showing you how to uh, take an animated still of a volcano and make it look like it's, uh, it's actually a video. Uh, I got this idea from uh, Oliver Villar of uh, BlendTuts.com uh, I want to give credit where credit's due. He made an awesome tutorial up about uh, distorting images and uh, Basically, I saw that tutorial. I also saw, I, well, I remembered a tutorial from Andrew Kramer from a while back where he uh, had taken a volcano and animated it in After Effects. And I was like, you know what? I bet I can figure out from uh, what uh, Oliver Villar did how to do this in Blender. So let's get started. Okay, this tutorial is going to take place inside of GIMP and inside of Blender. So I'm using GIMP uh, 2.8. First thing you're going to do is load your image in. Uh, here's my volcano image. First thing you're going to want to do is duplicate this image. We'll hide the bottom one. Hide the bottom one for now. Then we're going to take Glimpse, GIMP's uh, uh, clone tool. And you can make your, uh, your cursor in GIMP bigger by using your uh, bracket keys. But basically what we're going to do is you're going to hit the control button. A control key and wherever you when you hold down the control key and select an image in a GIMP, GIMP will remember this image and then GIMP will allow you to clone over whatever you want to clone over. So that's what I'm doing right here and just creating a clean plate to uh, get rid of these clouds here. And basically what's going to be going on is uh doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, the clouds are kind of going to be going over this uh, this background, and as I usually say, you know, the more time you take, you know, obviously the better results you'll get. But uh, it really doesn't have to be, uh, you know, you don't want to have anything sharp, but because but for the most part, your the smoke from the the volcano is going to be covering this up. Okay, and once you have most of this uh, filled in, you know, we'll take the uh, healing brush and clean this up just a little teeny bit on that edge there. And basically, with the when you select the uh, the healing brush, you can hold Control again, and basically what it'll do is it'll mix uh, the pixels in from where you you know held Control and hit and, and press the uh, healing brush, and you know just good for you know getting rid of a somewhat you know, harsh edges, I guess, like we're right there. Anyway, okay, now that you have that, let's turn this, uh, we'll turn that top one off. Whenever you're in a graphic design program, whether you're in GIMP or Photoshop, it's, it's a good idea to duplicate your image just so you can come back in case you mess something up. Okay, now what we're going to do is turn off this bottom image, use the uh, lasso select, and uh, we're just going to grab a you know, fairly quick, you know, Selection of all these, all this smoke coming up here. You know, and as you're making a selection, I mean, you want to try to make it a little bit circular. But again, this is a uh, because it's clouds. We'll use the uh, we'll feather this, and you can go pretty quick and still have this. You know, looking end up looking pretty cool. Okay, so once you make your selection, now what you're going to do is go to select. Feather, we'll take this up, it's already at 10, so we'll hit OK. Edit, copy, edit, paste into. Then you're just going to push your uh, create new layer here. And now you have this selection right here. You can then hit Control Shift A to get off this selection. Uh, okay. Okay, now what you're going to do, is we have this selection here, you're going to make sure you're on the selection, take your lasso tool again, and you're just going to make a selection just around the top part of this uh, volcano smoke. And you're just going to hit uh, select, feather, make sure it's feather by 10 again, okay, edit, copy, edit, paste into. You can hit Control Shift A to get rid of the selection. Now we can see. Okay, there we go. We got that top part there. So these are the three parts we need. We need the clean plate, which is right here. Then we need the long piece of smoke, which is right here. 
Then we need the top piece of uh, volcano smoke, which is right there. And this is what we're going to be uh, taking into uh, Blender and animating. Okay, now what you're going to need is you're going to hide this layer right here. Go to your clean plate. You're going to go to File, Export, and uh, pick a folder where you know where it's uh, it's going to. And, you know, we'll name this a uh, clean plate. All right, now you're going to hide this one, get your middle piece of smoke. And what you're going to do for this one is file, export, uh, just name this, middle. And uh, what you want to do is come right, right here where you see it says uh, select file type by extension. Go down until you see PNG because we definitely need the uh, transparency here. All right, once you have the PNG image selected, you're going to hit export and then just export again. Then now you're just going to hide this, come up to the top part of the smoke. Again, file, export. Uh, we'll name this top. Whoops. Oh, no, it's PNG. Okay, and export as PNG. There you go. Okay, here we are in Blender. If this is your first time using Blender, I recommend that uh, you go to File, uh, User Preferences, Input, and then select with Left. Select rather than Right, which is Blender's default. All right, the first thing you're going to want to do is uh, hit a Delete This Cube. So you're going to select the cube, hit X, delete it. Uh, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to take this camera, select it, hit Alt, G, and then Alt, R, and that would just set up the camera in a nice, uh, you know, place to, to work with the uh, the the images. Uh, the next thing, and this is a, a very cool thing in Blender, you're going to go to File, User Preferences, uh, Add-ons, and one of the things you want to do is slide down until you see uh, Import, Export, you know, Import Images as Planes. Make sure this is selected, and this will just make this next part a lot easier. Okay, now what you're going to do is you're going to hit 7 on your number keypad, and then you can hit 0 on your number keypad. And what we're going to do now is you're going to hit File, Import, Images as Planes, and as long as you did that File User Preferences add-on thing, you should, have, you should see this option. If you don't see that, it's because you have to go back and do the option we hit did uh, you know, just a minute ago. But uh, Import Images as Planes. You're then going to look for your uh, your image, wherever you saved it at. If you click this little four uh, face button here, you'll be able to actually see your images. And you're just going to select the uh, whatever uh, you named the, the clean plate and import images as planes. All right, once you come back into Blender, now what you're going to do so you can see this thing is you're going to... Uh, if you don't see this menu, hit the N key, and that menu will pop up. You're then going to look for a display. Go to shading and change it to uh, GLSL, and then textured solid, and you'll see your uh, your image right there. Okay, now that you see your image there, what you're going to do is hit uh, Shift A, and you're going to select Armature, and then go to Single Bone. The Single Bone will pop in. You're then going to hit Tab to go into uh, Edit Mode. You're then going to hit uh, R on your keyboard, X, and then minus 90. Now what you're going to do is just go to the top of that uh, Armature and just pull it down so you can shrink it, make it easier to deal with. Now you're just going to move this up towards the corner. If this thing is getting in your way, the uh, manipulator, you can hit control space and it'll come out of the way. Now you can grab the head if it was, if that thing was giving you a problem like, like mine just was. Anyway, uh, once you grab, grab the head, you can hit control space again and 
just take your manipulator and shrink it down a little bit more. I'm just moving this into the corner. Now hit Shift D to duplicate, then left click. Slide, you'll, you'll have another duplicate of your uh, armature, and that's just what I pulled out to the side. So I'm just putting it, that in this corner here. Okay, and now what you're going to do is hold the shift button down, select the other armature. Now you have both of these selected, and you can tell they're selected because they're both uh, highlighted with an orange color. You're then going to hit shift D, left click, and even though you didn't see other armatures uh, pop out, they're in there. So when you take your manipulator and pull straight down, you should see your two duplicate armatures. You're just going to put them down in this corner. Okay, now what you're going to do, uh, you're still in edit mode. You're going to hit tab to come out of edit mode. And you can pull, this is your, uh, in this panel right here, you can see all your objects. I'm just going to grab this edge so I can see it. So you have your one armature there, and right now we have our one plane here. So what I'm going to do now is, uh, I'm actually going to hold my middle mouse button and change it, turn the screen a little bit. Now what I'm doing is I'm just going to left click on this plane. And you can see it's selected over here also. Just so you're ever wondering if you selected something or not, you can look over here and if you see it, highlighted in orange you know you're selected onto it okay anyway now you have your your plane selected now you're going to hold shift and you're going to select your armature and see how I like over in this v in this view it kind of doesn't look like I selected the armature but if you look over here you can see this orange highlight around the armature so it's selected also so you first you select the plane then you select the armature or you know any of them and it selects all the armatures now what you do is you hit control P and you'll see the set parent to uh, menu bar pop up and then you're going to click select with I mean you're going to select uh, with automatic weights okay now that you have that the automatic weight to apply what you're going to do is select right here if when you select object mode, if by some chance you don't see pose mode pop up it might be if you don't see pose mo mode popped up just just select onto an armature and then you should see it pop up and then once you're in pose mode what should happen is when you select this up oh, there you go that's exactly what we want that's exactly what we want and it's basically an easy way of doing an after effects like a corner pin inside of blender I'm just gonna hit control Z to make sure I didn't mess that up okay let's make sure this render so come over into your uh, your render menu here, change this image editor to uh, new window, and let's try to render this just to make sure that it uh, everything is showing up. And it is good. Okay, and I just want to make sure that this has a. Uh, is a uh, shadeless okay yeah and, and when you're with your main image right here what you can do is with this this image selected come over to your material panel it's this little ball circle thing right here and then once you come in there look for shading and then select shadeless and basically what that means is just this uh, image will be illuminated where you don't have to worry about light shining on top of it Okay, now what you're going to do is hit circle on your number keypad to go back into camera mode. And then I'm going to hit file, import, import as planes. Now this next part, part is important. What you're going to do before you select, and here are the, the images, there's my clean plate, my middle, you know, smoke, and the top of my smoke. You want to make sure you click select uh, shadeless over here, uh, use alpha, and then also receive transparent uh shadows before you click over here all right now i'm going to click this middle one so select that import images as planes and very cool you can see basically what you're doing what you're saying i'll turn the camera so you can see it is that image is right on top right on top of the other image and uh basically what's going on it's, it's transparent so when i hit the uh the circle the zero number keypad it looks like one image but I'll rotate again. You can see it's actually hovering above that image. This is very cool because normally you would have to, uh, you know, uh, go through all these 
basic settings to make this thing transparent and you know put te you know set up the textures and make sure it was transparent and all this other stuff but because uh, Blender lets us import images as planes and then do those first couple clicks where we were able to select the uh, shadeless and al alpha you know it comes in very you know quickly and easily okay now what you're gonna do is hit zero on your number keypad again and we will hit a uh, hit tab you're then gonna hit control R to get a loop cut you'll see this purple line pop up you want to have that right in the center you're gonna left click to lock that in you're then going to hit a uh, a to select everything hit a well if you hit a once it'll deselect Hit a again it'll reselect now you're gonna hit W and then you're gonna to go to uh, subdivide All right once this subdivide comes up you're going to uh, select go to this number of cuts and uh, you're gonna click this up to 10 all right once it's clicked up to 10 now you're gonna hit W again and you're gonna hit subdivide again and now you'll have you'll see an image pretty much like this and this is basically what you're gonna to need to get this effect uh, you know I learned this from uh, Oliver Villa over at uh, blendtouch.com uh, awesome teacher and awesome technique uh, anyway all right once you have this thing subdivided now what you're gonna do is you are going to go back to uh, object mode Okay, back in object mode, what you're going to do now is you're going to hit Shift A to bring in another armature. Click single bone. You're then going to hit Tab. You're going to hit R, then X, and then negative 90. Same thing we did before. And so you can see a little bit easier. Once this armature is in there, you can see it's hidden behind that cloud. You'll come over right to here, this little person-like symbol. Select there and then select X-ray and you'll be able to see your uh, your armature there. So now we'll turn the camera so we can see a little bit easier. Looks kind of crazy, I know. Uh, you're going to take this green manipulator and just shorten this bone up some. Hit zero to go back into your, uh, your camera view so it doesn't look as confusing. And one of the things that's, that's useful about having the camera set up and hitting that zero is basically it takes you right back to almost like you're using like you're in a you know a 2d imaging program or almost like after effects so anyway you're going to move up this uh, armature like you see me how, what i did right there these other armatures are from the other uh from the other image with the bones in there don't worry about them you're then going to hit a shift d to duplicate left click you're going to use the uh, manipulator to drag out that uh armature bone hit shift D again left click drag out that armature bone shift D again left click drag out that armature bone and try to have these ones about you know pretty evenly balanced right there now what you're gonna do is uh select this one right here then hold shift and select these other four ones now you're gonna hit shift D again left click and now you'll have four duplicated bones you'll pull these down Okay, and so these different groups of bones don't confuse you. Uh, what you're going to do now is... There we go. Uh, you're going to go to item, and you can see this right here. It says armature 1, so we'll just change this to uh, middle. So we know it's the middle smoke. And then we'll select one of these. Uh, we'll actually hit tab to go into object mode. Otherwise, you won't be able to select the other armature. Select that one, and we'll change. We'll turn. We'll name this one uh, "Clean Plate." Now let's do a quick render just to make sure that everything is uh, looking like it should. So just click up here, render image, up, and look at that. Say basically, okay, it's showing us the transparency. It's showing us the transparency. Uh, outside of the render but there's a problem which should be easily fixed okay so now what we're gonna do is you're just gonna go hold your middle mouse button we'll turn make sure you're selected on the uh, the uh, the middle transparency texture and then what we'll do is you'll go to uh, go into wait a second material yeah you can see there it's not uh, showing it's being transparent 
So we'll select Z transparency and that should fix it. So we'll hit render again. There it goes. So yeah, it's just that if you have that problem, you're just going to go to material, the material button, and one simple click will fix the problem. You're just going to select Z transparency and it will be right. All right, so since we're already in object mode and we're actually at this angle, what you're going to do is select the uh, middle armature. And you can see that we're selecting the right armature because there's the, the middle name that we named it there. What you're going to do is just pull this, uh, actually hit tab, hit A, and select up. Okay, now what you're going to do, go back to, uh, actually, let's uh, go ahead and parent this since we have that transparency worked out. So what we're going to do is, yeah, go back to, uh, hit tab to go back into object mode. You're going to select on the middle transparency there. You're then going to hold shift, select on the middle armature, then you're going to hit control P uh, to set, set parent to automatic weights. Select that. Go into uh, object mode, hit zero on your number keypad, and now what we're going to do is select one of these and we'll just rotate. There we go, that's what we want. And I'm just doing that just so we know that it's, uh, it's working. Okay. Okay, now what you're going to do is um, select on that middle, uh, select the little plus symbol you see right there, and what you're going to do is uh, take this I, select that I, to hide that and then inside of that that middle right there you're going to select the other eye and then we're going to select these two arrows and basically what that's going to let us do is not be able to see that middle plane or select it so we can just work with this right here so what we're going to do now is select the uh, clean plate you're then going to go into uh select the armature actually that takes you into pose mode make sure you're in frame one and what you are going to do is select onto the uh, bottom uh left armature and you're just going to push this out to the side about like that select this top right one push this out to the side about like that and then what you're going to do is hit A so you select all the armatures uh, all the bones I should say and then you're just going to hit I and then select a location rotation scale you're now going to take this out to one second and we actually can select on our, uh, our armature there and hit alt G and then this one up here alt G which will set their positions now you're going to grab this armature pull this one out take this armature up top push this one out like that hit A to select all I to insert a keyframe you're going to select location rotation scale and then now it should, there we go, that's exactly what we want, just like that. Okay, now what you're going to do is you are going to go back over to your All Scenes panel, select Middle, select the eye so you can see again, the arrow so you can select again, go down to the Plane, select the eye so you can see, the arrow so you can select again. Uh, come back up, come to your Middle view, to your uh, Middle image here, select that image, and now select the uh, one of the armature bones and you'll know you're selected right because when you look to the item panel you'll see middle go into a select pose mode make sure you're on frame one and what see this little handle right here in the background kind of the clean plate and here's the kind of like the same handle of the middle plate you're going to hit A to select all of the bones and then with all of the bones selected you're going to need all of them for them to work right you're going to take your manipulator and move this image right over there. We'll use that handle to match it up. Then you're going to hit uh, I to insert a keyframe, take, uh, select location, rotation, scale. And you're now going to go to 100. I know I said one second before. Actually, I meant four seconds. Just the one confused me. And then what you're going to do is uh, uh, with all of your single bones selected again, you're going to grab and again match up that handle right there. So with all of the bones selected, you're going to hit I, insert location, insert keyframe, then uh, location, rotation, scale, and then now, there we go, and you can kind of see it, it's starting to form what we, we wanted there. Okay, now what you're going to do is, now that we have that, uh, that 3D rotational movement in there, 
now what you're going to do is um, select the individual one of the bones that these bones right here the four bottom bones are kind of like the the anchor bones you're going to want to make movements here you don't want the movements to be totally uh you don't want drastic movements for this to work and you can see right here here's the frame i'm on I actually want to be on the 100 frames so now you're going to select these and you're actually going to scale and rotate these bones just slightly to make it to get some uh movement out of here so not a uh, too drastic very you know slight motions uh sometimes you'll have to scale depending on the, the image you're using not too much Whoops, see how it's trying to jump right there uh you know you can pull out a little bit and just play with it you're kind of trying to get like a bulge effect again scale uh you know, sometimes you might even get a, a a decent effect by uh not scaling by uh, actually shrinking it down but once you have your your effects basically set up some way somewhat you know play with them and remember there's gonna be another picture so if you make some mistakes it's gonna cover up that a little bit but now you're gonna hit a to select all your armatures and then I to insert a keyframe then location rotation scale then what we should see is there we go very subtle yeah that's all we want it not not too much and again any mistakes we made are gonna are gonna be you know kind of covered up by the uh, last uh, transparent image plane we're gonna bring in okay now we're gonna we're gonna do is bring in that last image so one of the things we're gonna do is wherever you see this 3d cursor is where your new image is gonna come into so you see how it's right above it's right here so what we're gonna do is just Turn the camera so you can see. Put your 3D cursor just a little bit above so it actually comes in above these other images. Then you're going to go to File, just like before, Import, Images as Planes. Uh, look for your image. Here's mine here. Now before I select that, I'm going to look to the side and I have Shadeless selected. Use Alpha, and this has to be done before you bring the image in. So Shadeless is selected, use Alpha. Last time, what what happened was is this Z transparency wasn't selected even in this menu. It was, it was actually mask. So as long as you have the Z transparency selected, it should come in fine. You also want to have this receive transparent shadow selected. Okay, so with all that stuff selected, you're going to select your image, import as planes. Now, last time what I had showed you was I showed you how to uh, to hide and not select uh, these images. Because it's kind of cluttered, cluttered when I go to the, the zero on the number keypad, you can see you can barely see what's going on. Uh, one other way to deal with that is you can hit, go to your number keypad and you can actually hit the uh, backslash key that's right next to the number lock key, and that takes you into local uh, mode. So you can just deal with this particular you know object that you're working with. So with that local mode on, that's where we're at. Uh, and actually tells you up here that it's in a uh, local if you you know sit there and end up pushing it not realizing you you pushed it you can see up here that you're in it now what you're going to do is hit a uh, tab or you can select here but i recommend you hit a uh, tab to go into edit mode and then once you're in edit mode what you're going to do is you're going to hit a uh, control r to put a loop cut right down the center you're then going to hit a to select and you're going to hit w and then subdivide just like before you're going to take these cuts up all the way to 10 you're then going to hit W again, and then you're going to subdivide again, so that we have all of the, uh, you know, all of the uh, uh, cuts that we need to to have this deform properly. Okay, now what you're going to do is hit go again on your keypad that number backslash. You're going to hit that to come out of local. And you can see right here we're back in the user perspective mode, and what we're going to do now is actually you know we'll just going to move it up rather than trying to get crazy complicated just adjust your view right now if you need to, to pan your view I just hold the middle mouse button and hit shift and I can kind of drag the image around and what I'm going to do now is make sure that my 3d cursor I'm going to right click so my 3d cursor is right on this image here and because you're in 3d you always have to look around so I uh, up top it looked like I was over it you know go to the front view and you can see I'm that high above it so I'll kind of turn it to the front, right click again, and then look around and by moving around you can kind of uh you can position it where you where you want it. I just want the uh 
armature to come in, uh, you know, fairly close. Okay, so there it goes right there. Now what you're going to do is you're going to go uh, tab to go back into object mode. You're going to hit shift A to bring in your uh, armature. Single bone is actually going to bring in the armature. Now we're going to hit 7 on the keypad, number keypad, and 5 to get an orthographic view, which is just exactly straight up and down. Now we're in object mode. We did this before. Uh, we're gonna you're gonna hit a uh, tab. Whoops, yeah, you're gonna hit a uh, tab to go into uh, edit mode in Blender. If you're having a problem, like if you hit tab and you see like it doesn't happen, it pro it might be the fact that your mouse is over here, or over here. Blender is actually you have to be over the right panel when you hit your shortcut key. So if you're over this panel, you hit tab. You're good, but if you hit it over here, it won't go in. So if that's a problem, you know, that's probably what it was. Anyway, uh, now what you're going to do is you are going to hit R, X, negative 90, just like we did before. And you're going to line, prepare to line this up, just like we did before. Now, one thing that's going on, you see how we have, we have that Z transparency so we can see the cloud here, which is good, right? The problem is we can't see the boundaries of this cloud. So what we're going to do is actually hit a, tab to come back out in object mode select this uh this plane here matter of fact let's name this a uh, top while we're out here just so we know so here's the you know if this menu isn't here you just hit n it'll pop up there's top it's name now okay uh so now what you're going to do is um uh go over to object mode and then to see the the boundary of this even when we're not selected on it if you select this bounds right here, now when we come out, I'm going to hit tab to go out. And then I'm going to select the armature. You see that we can still see the uh, the boundary of that. Uh, we still see the boundary of, of the cloud, even though we're out. Whoops. Okay, now here we're not. Uh, there you go. So now we're out and, and I'm selected onto the armature. Now I'm going back into edit mode on the armature. But we're so because we had selected that in the uh, on that cloud, we can see the, the boundary there. So now what we're going to do is hit a 7. When you see squares, you know you're in orthographic mode. You're going to hit S to scale this down some. I'll zoom out so I can see. And uh, now what I'm going to do is hit Shift D. Whoops. Use the manipulator so it's perfectly over. Shift, Shift D again. Shift D again. And I'm just left clicking to lock it in. Shift D again. This tutorial, I thought it was going to go quicker, so I'm trying to speed it up a little bit. Let me just balance these out a little bit. All right, so now what you're going to do is you're just going to uh, select all these, hold Shift, and you can select them all. A probably would have did the same thing, but now you're going to hit Shift D to duplicate them. Take your manipulator, drag, drag down, hit Shift D to manipulate again. And I'm just putting some extra bones in here just to have uh, actually extra control and to make sure everything is balanced out. Okay, now that I have that, all, all of those, now what I'm going to do is just come out, hit tab to go back into object mode. I'm then going to select this, the plane, uh, the top plane. If you get confused, you can just look in your uh, all scenes menu and you can see top. Now I'm going to select one of the uh, the armatures and this one we actually didn't name it so it'll just be uh, you know what the heck Let's do it just like we did it before here's the armature we'll name this top okay yep all right, so now what we're going to do is you're going to select your uh, your top plane. You're then going to hold shift, select your top armature, and then going to hit control P, just like before, and with automatic weights. Now what you're going to do is select, go into uh, pose mode. You're going to hit A to make sure all of your bones are selected. Hit circle on your number keypad. And what you're going to do is drag, oops, make sure you're on the right spot in your manipulator which I'm not obviously you're gonna hit, take your just drag it over put it down fairly close to the other one right there it's circle to go back into camera view so now what you're gonna do is just like we did before you're gonna go back 
to uh, the beginning and whoa that is confusing as heck so actually it worked very cool so I hit uh, local mode and it took us in with the armatures and all that's where I wasn't sure if they would they would all come but anyway so we know we're in the the front view so now what we're gonna do is hit I to uh, actually before we do that come back out and even with I know that is very messy there what you're actually gonna do is uh we want to line this up trust me I know that that is messy but basically what I'm gonna do is even with all this stuff just trying to ignore that without getting into all the intricacies of changing all those to make it less where what we're gonna do is line this up so it's right over top of uh, this other plane and then you're going to hit I to insert a keyframe, location, rotation, scale. You're then going to go out to 100, which is actually the uh, four seconds. And you're going to kind of try to line it up again so it, it stays there. So now you're going to hit I and location, rotation, scale again. So now just to make sure that it's pretty much staying with the other, you know, moving as, as it should. Okay, with all those armature bones still selected, now what you want to do is see right here this last frame, last three keyframe is at 100. I have it on frame 102. Don't do that or it'll mess you up. Uh, make sure you click back to either 100 or before 100. So I should be good there, right at 100. With all the bones still selected, I know this is hard to see, but uh, you're going to hit S to scale on the X axis. Take it out a little bit, not too much. S to scale on the Y axis not too much you're then going to go to your number keypad and hit backslash next to the number lock to go to local mode and now what i suggest you do is uh do a bunch of rotations so you're going to select individual bones rotate slightly so i'm just going to grab these slightly rotate first uh separate them the ones closest to the clouds now what i'm going to do is hit a uh, diagonal bone select them i just hold, held shift whoops yeah, I'm gonna I hit the now I'm gonna scale these actually a little teeny bit. Rotate them a little bit more. I'm gonna grab I think I had three bones there, but it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna select these two bones, same thing here now. I'm gonna rotate a little bit again. And then I am going to uh scale very subtly again. Now with all that, what I'm gonna wanna do now, make sure after doing that you do uh Hit A to select all your bones and I to insert a keyframe, then location, rotation, scale. Go back to your number keypad, hit number, the backslash right next to number lock. To come back into uh, the regular mode. Now you can see your, you can see your, uh, your cloud. See that it's, it's changing. So it's not changing quite as much as I want it. So actually what I'm going to do is come back to frame one and I'm actually going to hit S to scale on the X axis a little bit here. Maybe I'll pull that in a little bit and I think I'm actually going to rotate a little bit here. Then I'm actually here I'm going to uh, I'll hit uh, I to insert a keyframe location rotation scale and here I'm actually going to go into uh, the local I'm going to go to my key, number keypad backslash same thing again, grab these individual and I'm actually just going to rotate a little bit the uh, opposite direction. Not too much. Maybe pull a little bit there. Then the same thing just like just like before. Uh, you're going to hit, make sure you hit A to select all of your bones. I to insert a keyframe, location, rotation, scale. Now let's come back out. So I'm going to hit a, a backslash next on the key, keypad, number keypad. And let's see how it looks now. A little bit better. A little bit better. Now obviously you can, you can play with this. And I'll show you something pretty cool here. Now you see how we have that there. Now pretty much most of the work is done. One other thing I'll do just because the work is already done. I'm going to go back to number keypad. I'm going to change my uh, my camera view. Okay, and since we already have that little bit of work done on that last piece of cloud, what we actually can do to make this a little bit more dramatic is go into 
object mode and uh, in object mode we actually let me actually turn off that uh Eh, turn off this boundary here uh, now in object mode what we can do is hit shift D and actually select that cloud I'm gonna hit camera mode now I have a, a whole new cloud that basically it's a two-for-one deal we did the work on the first one so I'm just gonna throw this one in here actually move it around some I'll shrink this down Shrink it down even more. We'll just give it a little bit of overlap with that other cloud there. Okay, now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to use the camera kind of to crop this image actually. So. I'm actually going to come out, I'm going to hit uh, the N key to get rid of that menu and the T key to get rid of that. I'm going to take this little triangle, split the screen. On this screen, I'm going to hit circle, or zero, I should say, so I can get a, a camera view. I'm going to select the camera here, just so it's easier to control it. And I'm just going to come in tight so that I can see the entire uh, animation. See how it's cutting right there, so I'll just adjust the camera a little bit more. Bring it in and just make sure that it doesn't, uh, you know, cut off in uh, in camera view. That looks pretty good right there. Okay, now the last thing left to do is to render this. So all you're going to do is you're going to go to uh, your render button. Uh, you can set this to I, I usually like uh, HD TV 720p. Select that. Change this PNG to H2.64. Go to encoding uh, where it says AVI. Select MPEG4. Now you are just going to go to your uh, output file and select uh, where you want this to go. Hit accept. You can either name it or just hit accept so you know where it's going. Okay, now what you're going to do is just go see where you said start. One, change this 250 to 100. You're just going to go up and select uh, animation for a render. Okay, and there it is. There's the uh, animation. Not quite as subtle as I uh, had had hoped, but uh, hopefully you guys will get an idea of some, you know, some of the, some of the things you can possibly do with this technique. Uh, thank you for watching this tutorial. If you like these videos and you would like to see more, please subscribe and thank you for watching.